It's a bird! It's a plane! It's flying bear. The Flying Bear Ghost 5, a 3D printer. This is what comes in the package. It was very well packed. Everything in bags and nicely numbered. This is the heated bed with good insulation around it. And uh, the gantry all looks good. And this is the page out of the manual that you really need. Because I'm gonna go through now a few photos of the build process. Now, in the manual, which is the manual, there is absolute, oh no, I won't say that, there is very little on the actual assembly of the machine. What it does do is direct you to their YouTube video assembly instructions, which is a series of, I think from memory, seven or eight short videos, and they are very, very good to follow through and assemble this machine. You must follow the steps in the order that they are shown on the video, and that will make sure that you have a nice, solid, square 3D printer frame. The instructions, as far as I was concerned, were very easy to follow. You didn't need a written instruction set like in a manual. The videos were fine and they led you through very well. There were a few things about this printer that I wasn't sure about. One was the cloned extruder, as you see here. You can see at the bottom there's a screw that tightens the feed. Don't undo that all the way because the screw will go flying and you'll never see it again. This is the Z offset setting. As you'll see, there is an end stop and a little bolt that touches it. A very simple, easy and effective way to set your Z offsets. Now, we're getting into actually using the printer. This is the very first start, the first turn on of the printer. That's the beautiful colour screen that it has. Now, this is me trying to plug in the a USB, which unfortunately it doesn't take a USB, it takes a micro SD, which I dislike. Now you will note that there is a little gap under the micro SD card slot. Don't push it in there, you'll lose it into the printer. Make sure you get it into the slot properly. That's what she said! <laughs> there was a, a file, an, a, a pre sliced file on the SD card. Uh, so we'll print that out shortly. This is the menu, some of the items that are on the menu. An excellent touch screen, very well laid out. Even the filament load and unload was nice and easy. The movement of the axes was very simple to do. Um, you'll see here I'm doing Z at one millimeter, then I flick it over to 10 millimeters and it moves the Z which is there. Now a word of warning, with the X, you will note a horrible sound. On the X motor, there is the probe, triggers the switch, and these two zip ties. If they're not positioned correctly, then the uh, limit switch won't activate and you will get a grind. So just be aware of that, that the zip tie buckles have to be well out of the way. This is the first print. Now this is straight out of the box after I assembled it. I've done absolutely nothing to the printer. I followed the directions, as I said, by the video and it took me probably with photos and filming and whatnot, a little over an hour to put together. There's a bit more involved in this printer in assembly than some that I've seen. Some come pretty much fully pre-assembled. This one you have to do a little bit. It is a semi-enclosed printer. The side panels and back panel are part of the strength and structure of the frame of the printer. I did find that because they're solid, it was a little dark inside the printer to try and see what was going on. 
would be better if they were clear, I think, and, and maybe some form of LED lighting in there would be best. Now, the reason that I agreed to review this printer was firstly the name because I'd never heard of it. Secondly, was the price. It's currently listed on Amazon and the one that we have was provided by Flying Bear via Amazon is uh, $399.99 Australian dollars. Uh, that's about $50 US I think at the moment or maybe a bit more. It's not an expensive printer and when you get it out of the box you will note that no it's not an expensive printer. As I said, the extruder is a, a clone twin gear extruder, or just plastic. The hot end is a clone E3D type hot end. And the, the mount for the hot end is, is plastic. You know, the, the limit switches are run of the mill. The filament run out sensor switch is, is flimsy. It's what you expect out of a, a printer of this price point. And everything worked. So I don't know what more you can ask for. Everything works. It prints very well. I liked how it printed. And you'll see on the screen here, it actually gives you a live update of the speed that it's printing at and the settings. If you touch on one of the settings, you will be able to change it. These, uh, we're just running through some prints now. Uh, the bolt was the one on the SD card um, and the, all the white filament on here was the provided sample filament. All the other filaments are Ararum filaments provided by our filament sponsor Ararum Australia. As you can see the tolerances were very good and the print quality was very good. Um, almost excellent I would say. I did discover early on that perhaps it was under extruding just a little, but I was able to fix that. But you will see I also had a lot of trouble with stringing. It took me a long time to work out the settings for Simplify 3D to fix the stringing. It actually needed a retraction of 8mm, which is quite a lot. I've never had to use that much before. These hand prints, the grey ones, are in PET-G. The blue was PLA. And as you can see, the stringing was a real problem until I figured out how to fix it. And these are after I increased the retraction. So all in all, very good. This is just a quick time lapse. And while it's running through, I'll tell you that the printer is, oh, if I can find it just quickly because I can't remember off the top of my head, 255 by 210 by 200. Um, it is a 24 volt system. It will print all filaments except when I got to uh, ABS, which you'll see in a second. I don't know why it's only semi-enclosed. You could easily make a, a door or, or a cover for the front of the printer and, and a top that could go on it and make it a fully enclosed printer and then ABS would be no problem whatsoever. It would print it very well. The bed surface, the print surface works very well. It's one that looks similar to a lot of other printers that I've seen, but this one actually works. While it's hot, it sticks. I never had anything come unstuck. And when it cools, it lifts straight off. Now these prints in the pink are ABS, and they're all pretty much done at 0.12 layer heights. And the small model, this little one, came out really well. When you get into the bigger models, like this one, you will see it had layer separation, and that's because it's not fully enclosed. This last print is probably the best one that I got out of it, and it came up very, very nicely. Now, as I said, as far as printing goes, it prints well. It's priced well. 
had a couple of little things that I didn't like, the, the micro SD for a start. Um, but there were a few things that I did like, like the Z offset switch, which is, I use it on a couple of other printers, which I've modified for the same sort of system. And I think it works very well. The touch screen is really nice. And it also has chit chat enabled for the um, firmware. So that's how I went in and fixed the, what I perceived to be an under extrusion problem. I went in through Prontoface and increased the extrusion steps, the E steps from 400, I think to 410. So only a minor increase, but it took that change and saved it. So uh, it's obviously a fully open source system. So in summary, this printer was provided to us by Flying Bear. I love those names, Flying Bear, Two Trees. No, the, yeah, anyway. It was supplied to us at no charge. We have no commercial agreement with Flying Bear, as usual. We were able to perform our review under our terms, which is fully our opinion, whether it's good or bad, uh, and they have no say in the final product. That's the Flying Bear Ghost 5, a nice little printer. Good one for a starter if you want to learn how to assemble and use a printer. The bed leveling, nice and easy to do. Everything about it was, was spot on. Also, uh, I believe that the uh, thermal runaway is active, so you don't have any problems there. Okay, that's about it for this video. Don't forget to subscribe. We don't put out a lot of videos now, but we do continue to put some out. So a subscription and a notification will let you know when we put out a video. There's a couple more to come. So enjoy, stay safe, stay away from COVID, and I'll see you on the next one.